it going live. Oh, yep, got it. Um, so welcome to another episode of Operation Grow Show. You know, we've been away for a little while again, just trying to figure out and settle down and work out what's going to be the best um, day of the week time to do it. And I think probably Saturday is going to, what it's going to settle on. But um, this week we've got GMF and Magma back on the show. So, hey, everybody, welcome. How are you doing? Thanks for having us. Cheers. Good to have you guys here. Um, hopefully, um, everybody has been doing well. Anything, anything exciting been happening? <laughs> um, in your neck of the woods, Magma, how's life on the islands? We had some rain, finally. Yay! So, we've been fixing the road. and Nice, nice, to... nice. Repair the rain damage. Well, over here, um, I'm looking at the forecast for next week. It's like, mm, yeah, there's plenty of it. You're welcome to come over and take some. Yeah. And I do mean plenty of it. It's going to not stop till next Sunday, I think. <laughs> oh. oh, well. And you, GMF? Oh, I can't complain. We had a nice snow. Now we got some rain, washed it all out. So we'll go back and forth between, you know, freezing rain and snow for a little bit. That's part of living in the Midwest. It's part of the beauty of it. You get to see all the seasons. So mm -hmm. other than that, just, you know, enjoying living in the third largest cannabis market in America. Oh, very nice. And I see, so you're saying uh, you've got snow already. Wow. Okay. Oh, it's Oh, yeah. Through Thanksgiving, we had our first big snow was on Halloween. So, man, we had a good dumping for Halloween. And then after that, it's just been on and off. Oh, my. <laughs> that's, that's insane. Winter in the Midwest. It, it, well, it makes us a hearty shock, you know, it keeps us from being weak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's starting to um, kick in over here, the the winter weather. It's been below freezing. We had some some quite a heavy frost and ponds started to freeze over a bit. But, um, yeah, I had yeah, like 18 I, I, degrees here. Yeah, that's probably, but that's cold though, dude, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it's like freezing cold. I'll admit, I love on a cold winter's day going into the garden <laughs> and it just being like a little slice of summertime. It is absolutely, that's one of my favorite things is having it be absolutely frozen outside yet there's this little tiny oasis of summertime. Mm. How's oh, that in the UK? At the oasis of summertime? What the one day? It's not <laughs> on a Wednesday it's not afternoon. <laughs> it fleets by. Oh, there it was. Shit, missed it. Um, yeah. Oh, no. It's fine if it's going to be clear skies and ice cold. Then that's fine. But there's gray cloud low oppressive bullshit is just depressing and frustrating um to say the least um yeah yeah so actually part of what i wanted to get into and then hopefully people in chat as well actually maybe put this on as a poll for the um for the chat was i know i kind of bring it up fairly often but like where ai is getting into and how it's going to become like and it's helpful and as an assistant in the growth space and it's going to change how people and not necessarily not, not change how you grow but the way that you have access to the information and it's presented to you i think means that you can get better answers to questions um it's less of having to go and you know dive 15 pages deep in search engines and things like that to try and figure out or sift through however many hundred bloody forum postings, um, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so that's on one side. And the other bit is where it's getting into, you know, you can take a picture of your your grow or whatever and say, what's going on here? What, what What's wrong? You know, what what's the nutrient, potential nutrient deficiencies and things like that. Um, and you haven't had to train models up to do it it's now kind of you can <laughs> cost very little at the end of the day to actually do this um and it's available to 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 everybody well and i, I think that's it right there the availability man when the most of us come up during prohibition 
you were lucky if you could get any kind of accurate information to try to guide your decision making. Yeah. So will the AI guide you through prohibition problems too? Give you some uh, good advice? <laughs> Probably the first bit of advice would be to, to say nothing ever. Odor control, man. That was something early on that everyone had to learn because we didn't, you know, when people first started having to go indoors and stuff, no one knew anything about charcoal filters and, you know, odor gels and stuff like that. Yeah, I remember when ozone was the thing and people were <laughs> messing themselves up with ozone generators. So, yeah, it's uh, we've come a long way, especially to the point of being able to apply a generative AI to tell us what we're doing wrong and what we're doing right and what we need to adapt. Yeah. Put that because I mean, I've been surprised to see well, a, a how quickly it's moving. That's the bit that I find I think catches people off guard a lot of the time is you know this idea that oh it'll never do this and you go mm, be careful because in six months time <laughs> you're going to be kicking yourself. The entire world changes quickly. Look about how many people said, you know, a year ago, you'd never be able to get medical, you know, weed in the UK, or you'd never get most of the US, you know, most of our population having access. People, people, it's easy to deny what we don't think can happen, even when there's evidence in front of us. Yeah, exactly. Um I'm gonna have to keep I keep getting pinged left, right, and center here by people. <laughs> focus, man, focus. Yeah, yeah, being popular is rough. Would be handed. Well, no, no, no. Need to get AI to handle all the bullshit, not the bullshit, all the um, the responses and things. Which is funny because people are doing that more and more now, um, training it up to be like you, um, so it adopts your personality. Um, very soon, you're not gonna know. Am I talking to? an AI and is it AI just talking to AI or pretending to be somebody else? <laughs> that would so, make customer service so much easier. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's <laughs> AI models now having careers on Instagram. And making good money. Hey? Yeah, I mean, no, good, good pay. Yeah, crazy, like, 500 grand a month kind of crap going on. It's like, yeah, but I that maybe the drop in the ocean, you know, one in a million are doing things like that. Um, but it is a, it does pose a question of the, <laughs> what am I? Nobody on the internet knows you're a dog. Which was the old saying. Uh, but, mm -hmm. Getting on to the as a demonstration of where it's getting to and it becoming a useful tool for in the growth space. So rather than it just going off and as I said, you know, you do a query on Google and um like let's say, yeah. How do I uh, transport do I get, my soil? Get rid of root gnats which is always a good one I mean if you go and ask that of Google okay but you've got It'll to try to sell through, your products <laughs> just try to sell your product and you've got to sift through stuff and you know you've got a lot of crap that you now have to go and sort through and sift through uh, now, to your question that you were asking earlier, Magma, this is connect. This has been given offline documents that it will now cross-reference with this question and use that as its source of knowledge um, to answer it. So you've got all these books on pest management and pest control, et cetera. That's where it's going to go to. It's not going to go and you know try and do some random search online or just make up an answer. And it does take a little bit longer for it to actually come up with the answer but it fingers crossed live demos shit always goes wrong <laughs> um but yeah this is I mean, to trawl through quite a bit to to pull it together and then what it'll do is it'll do all these it finds all 
similar or, or very closely matching bits of information, passes it through to another model that then summarizes and makes sense of it and presents it back in a way that makes sense for us to read. Um, but it's running on nothing particularly fancy at the moment. So, you know, this is the kind of response you get back. Uh, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> it's tried to create a link. This is the problem with these AI models is they still try to be really helpful. <laughs> and it's trying to create a link to something that doesn't exist. Um, but yeah, it just takes a little bit of tweaking to get it. And interesting, it even does it know of certain products because it is aware of these things um, so since uh, cannabis is like from um, high calcium based soil areas could you see what uh, the AI would say would be the benefits of using micronized calcium for the plants Uh, micronized calcium. What about to uh, to maybe give a short, uh, uh, but uh, it's a simple. Well, let's see what comes back. It might, it might, no, it might yeah. not. Um, it'll be interesting to see what it does. And then along with this, it's also got. Like one of the things I've found interesting is when you go, well, I say interesting, like you go to a a seed site or something like that, and the pictures there are all just pictures of buds, but they all look the same. Right? It's just a water green. And then how do you know it's even a picture of that? I, I find it visually. Yeah, no, there's quite a lot of breeders that have like posts of seed companies that have their pictures. For different mm. plants. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but I was looking at one where you could have it so uh, you grab like the description from here, which is like, and, and quite often this may be all that you get. Actually, I think that's probably a bad one. Let's pick something else. That's even worse. There we go. It's got a bit more descriptive information. So you just like copy that, pop it in here, that being you wanted to create an image, the general class of what you're trying to describe here is hemp. Well, I had to do it like that to get around certain things. <laughs> um, but you could also choose fungus if it was mushrooms that you were doing or just general herbs or just a general plant. And the idea here is you'll try to create like a thumbnail for um, a listing, but using all of that text input, creating a, a visual description that it then uses as the input into the image model to generate the image. And there you go. Um, for a Northern Lights, oh, it's kind of cool. Can it uh, image visualize a hydroponic system too? Sorry? Can it image visualize a hydroponic system setup? Yeah, you could ask it to do that. No, no, uh, this, this uh, one I've tuned, uh, I've, I've tweaked it. It'll only do this style of drawing. So. <laughs> okay. So, um, so you couldn't do like a technical drawing. Yeah, like you, you could ask, ask it to do, it to do a sketch, sketch for a room, for example. So you could get like, can you give me a grow room this size uh, with this door on the right side? Uh, this this <laughs> length and uh, width. Uh, or you could ask it to be like more or less specific for whatever you wanted. Like if you wanted it to be design you a small uh, grow area to have a uh, tissue it's culture. Slow. Um, like like kind of old school uh, drawings where you have like really good visualizations. Yeah, no, no, like technical drawings. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. I don't know how well it would do the day. Dimension side of things because it's not really understanding of that, and all everything is a square picture that will do. I mean, like the 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 um the canvas is 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 yeah. is square, um, but it could 
do a representation of what you were after. Um, yeah, like a, like a simple design advice for how to set up like airflow and stuff like that. So if people wanted to do like a grow room, it would maybe help with like, okay, you could throw in some insulation and do this and do that. And... Yeah, I think it, would, it could help. And it'll only be getting better at doing it. Like right now, I wouldn't have it try and design it, it at that point because it, it doesn't really know. Um, like if you were probably trying to follow some of the plans, <laughs> standing back off, it's going, hmm, okay. <laughs> yeah, it looked good on paper, but the practicality of this is not really there. Um, but Because given that's another like six some of months, the things that people are taking uh, quite a big charge, you know, to design grow facilities and to design like a uh, water filter setups and stuff like that. Well, yeah, yeah, funny yeah. enough, that was something we were talking about with Pat uh, from Green Bicycles potentially is how you would potentially run a larger size facility using these kind of AI models to take a lot of the actual labor out, what we usually have to spend a lot of money making people do. Yes, but do you think the AI is going to be running mechanical devices or it's going to be uh, responsible for the planning of it? It'll be running I think it could mechanical probably... devices as well, yeah. Yeah, it can do both. There's no reason not to. How can you connect it to, like, let's say you have a brand with the sensors and controllers. Uh, would it be possible to connect it to that or do you need to make, like, your own control unit that you connect all the devices to for the AI to be able to do that? Um, but I mean, the, the, the AI can absolutely control physical devices. How it does it would all depend on the implementation. But yeah, I mean, it can either do it through, you know, it can send a signal to it. It can control it. Yeah, what it would have trouble with is a manual knob. But if it's an electronic up and down, you could just hook it in and it can send the signal. But then all the manual knobs Run end up off. having solenoids, having a solenoid attached to it or a stepper motor attached to it. So it becomes incredibly accurate in terms of turn it two degrees to the right and it's turned two degrees to the right. Um, so, and yeah, can you these then, are all. Can you then maybe take out a lot of the sensor work by like installing uh, cheaper cameras like they did with the la lidars and stuff like that they were competing with the like cars full of sensors and then they had other words they just put like less cameras but they were getting more information from them just by using like ai yeah because it's well, the, the overall processing and that's gotten a lot better so yeah as those and as the overall field develops and improves, you can suddenly go, well, I don't need to do it that way anymore because the advancements in image analysis and vision has become so good that I can now do what I was doing with LiDAR with just two cameras. So I'm going to get a slightly yeah. stereoscopic image or whatever. Um, because you look at one of those companies that do like sensors and you start going into all the sensors they have, like, I guess soil moisture would be kind of hard to do without what the moist device but uh infrared the camera man going, yeah like the stuff that's mm. going on in the air it'd be interesting to see how much of those sensors you could replace with something more simple by connecting it to ai yeah it, it's a case of I, it's the right tool for the right job that i mean obviously that's what you've got to work out um and you know, where I see it being really useful right now is it can tap into all of the analytical data that you're gathering about your grow. So if you've got all of these devices or all capturing all the moisture levels and, you know, humidity, temperature data, you're also logging stuff um, as you go, it can analyze all of that and summarize things up for you, tell you how think you know, where things are heading for, what's going on. It can look at past performance and project where it's going to kind of predict you know, some sort of prediction but also it has a, a 
a good understanding of, oh, hang on, we've seen these problems before. Um, yeah, I actually, I actually think uh, Argus have a subscription package that you can buy with some of their equipment, and uh, it's AI run for hmm. for for controlling people's growth, uh, like completely everything. Yep, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, exactly. I mean, the thing is, with them, it, it, it's its ability to do that holistic overview and not just focusing in on the one task. I mean, like the AIs that have been around that can do single task um, compute stuff really well. That, that's, you know, they're, they're, some, they're really good ones, but they're very much just doing one single thing. The beauty behind with these new models that have come out is you go, well, he has a picture, he has a whole bunch of text, he has some audio, bring it all together. And tell me what's yeah, no. going on. And then that's and I think like it's, uh, seriously fucking powerful. And I think it's very um, accurate, no? With the, it's, it's less like uh, time off compared to uh, many other systems. Like when you get the AI in there, it's, it's you get like a more stable curve, I guess you would say. Cool. For like... For, for like all the different factors you control, you know, you can react quicker. I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, well, that's just more stable. It, it, mm, mm. And it can spot small patterns in the data that you can't, but just because of the volume of data. It'll see trends in it that you can't spot as a human. Well, um, and it can watch 10 tiny infrared, cheap infrared cameras and gather a much better picture than a human who's got to go one to the next to the next and kind of do mental comparisons. Yeah, 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 exactly. But it can I also be looking be at like all of your regimes, your nutrient regimes, what you've been doing, how you've been doing it. It has access to all the documentation that can see that mm, things aren't going quite how they should be cross-references the documentation and then comes back to you and goes, look, this is what I recommend you do. Um, you need to use these nutrients in this ratio, da 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 da, da, da. Off you go. Um, and could I mean, it you spot could potentially say you're connected to valve A is that nutrient, valve B is this, off you go, mix away. <laughs> Have at it. Um, could it spot insects quicker too? That I think, yes, it would be better, especially using the right camera technology than we probably could be at crop scouting. Yeah, it would be able to like, with that infrared and plant health monitoring through how plants react. Um, oh yeah, yeah, really quickly it would identify that something was up. Um, I mean, you can watch transpiration. You can watch where the plant's active and where it's not. There's there's so much information that's in that near red and infrared that we don't really get as humans. Bugs get yeah, it, but we don't. Yeah, as soon as a bug attacks the plant and it stops photosynthesizing efficiently, that alters its reflective nature or absorption pattern, and you see it stand out from the crowd it looks different to everything else as soon as powdery mildew moves in and there's just that fine little layer which you can't see with the naked eye but it's blocking the the infrared or absorbing the infrared all of a sudden or reflecting more of it um and so it stands out from all the others and our eyes are great for something you can see it yeah, yeah so in terms of and then you would go around and go okay it didn't originally know what it was, but you could see something was different. And then you tell it, oh, that thing that was different, that was powdery mildew, or that was thrips or root gnats or whatever it is. You know, you keep notes with along with it. And then over time it goes, oh, hang on, I've seen this before. Let me just quickly cross-reference what has been all the environmental data and everything else that's led up to this. And let me check that against everything else I know and go, yep, you've probably got powdery mildew, or yep, you've probably got thrips. Um, or whatever it happens to be. Um, so it gets smarter. You know, it can get better and better at your specific environment over time or your whatever it is you're using it for over time. Um, and it gets handy in, in, in breeding as well, being able to ask 
questions of the database of, of um, you know, okay. things related. That's um, what I want to know is I want it to do predictive breeding because I'm always playing around and theorizing about, okay, well, what would this do with this, et cetera, et cetera. That's what I want. I want an AI that can give me genetic predictions and show me what genetics could look like and be like. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> also, well, enough of the, well, I mean, how accurate it gets, but, you know, what you can start to do is say, well, show me, in like that EU seed finder database, you can do queries along the lines of, find me all lineages where from the start point to the end point, flowering time is reduced by 25%. Or where there was a sudden find me um, lines where between one and the next, there was a sudden change in flowering, like it just dropped. And you see every time that that particular one is used, flowering times have reduced on the next generation that comes out from it. So you can then use it and go, well, okay, it's a good bet if I use that, it's going to reduce the flowering times. All right, so but then don't we have to, to dig into that one's gene pool to look for what genetic markers might signify that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, then you have to get into actually taking the genetic material. But I'm saying with just its ability to... With just predictive knowledge... Yeah, just its understanding of the lineage and enough reviews and enough information about everything in the of each one of each strain that's involved. Could it start to give you an idea of, yeah, well, every time I've seen this, everybody talks about this afterwards. So there's a good possibility you bring, you know, these together. And the fact is it can look at, you know, thirty-five thousand different strains and see where these patterns exist um which you could do too it just take you a while to do it um could you use it also as like um uh, almost like a around the clock security guard and you could ask it what to look for so let's say you have like a lot of seeds you want to find the fastest growing one you could ask it that or if you have like insects problems or whatever uh, task you have you know could you ask it to look at certain spots and give you uh, notice when stuff happened that was worth uh, knowing of? Yeah, yeah. I could give it thresholds that say, you know, if you you see this, then send a message. We'll notify whatever it happens to be. If you see a bunch of dark spots appear, let me know there's a water leak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you see, like this large black pool appearing across the floor. <laughs> Let the neighbors below know. Because um... <laughs> I guess it focused much better than an ordinary security guard, or even if you had like a person standing inside the grow rooms checking constantly. I guess this would be better because it could pick up everything and never get tired. So. Yeah, it, it's watching 24-7, 365. Um, Full focus. I uh, see Tasmanian Devil with the, uh, you know, it, it won't like to be called a gardener and decide to kill off all the plants, <laughs> but you wouldn't be able to turn it off. But like, hell, it'd be like, um, I'm sorry, Dave, I can't let you use that cow mag. <laughs> um, for a, a hell style reference. Uh yeah, it's um yeah, after you harvest it locks you out of the grow room to protect the plants. <laughs> Shit, every time he comes in it kills these fucking things. I mean I have put my blood, sweat, and tears into it for the last ninety days. I'm not about to let them kill it. <laughs> but, well, uh, yeah, it go, makes go, me go. wonder too, like uh how expandable is this too? Because I mean basically it doesn't matter if your facility is a three by three tent or a you know 30,000 by 30,000, it should be able to just add cameras, right? It's still one AI. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's, it's very scalable. Um, and the beauty behind this thing is you have what they call agents. So you can have one set of agents that's just responsible for looking after the, the vision side of things and another one that is looking at 
sensor data and another one that's you know looking at log information that people are logging about what's going on etc but then then they all report back to another head agent of everything that they're observing and it's summarizing that up and um it's then able to that's the bit that then responds back to you so it actually has like, like its own little workforce that it can build and it, as it needs more it just spins up more and more and more of these agents um, and they're all working uh, autonomously Could you have it in like an app where you could go in and you could just add devices and connect it to it and then you just set it to go? Yeah, I guess you could. I mean, I, I think there's, I mean, there's, a... okay, yeah, I mean, say you have that, yeah. a, a facility with one grow room and let's say you have another facility with five grow rooms. How would you go about for the different situations? Just okay, but I mean, like, what we're talking about here, I mean, I think maybe we need to be clear is that we're talking about, th those are like very specific sort of implementations and that would come down to how you wanted to implement it. There's no... I guess there's set, like a, a minimum or... implementation and a maximum implementation. So maybe both scenarios would be cool. Um, I'm trying to think of how to answer it because the, the thing is this, I mean, it, what you're talking about is Let's like say you how, have a box the, uh, that you can connect this to app, for example, and then you can connect those in groups or something like that. So you could get it to work in like a physical situation. Yeah. But, but okay. So these are, as I said, I mean, it's an implementation and it comes down to how do you want to implement it? How, you know, I want to have it do this. All right. Well, you need to say, the interface that it can connect up to. Um, so have it in the growth tent then to be like the basic of it. Yeah, so it would need to capture, something needs to capture the sensor data and log it into a database. And then the AI is given access to the database and can look at the sensor data that's coming through. Um, and it can just query the database however quickly it needs to. Um, or it can actually see the live data coming past. Um, and could and, that and be like a uh, uh, like a hub that you could connect thing, and the signal could go through it, and then you could kind of say what it was and what brand it was for, and then it could go out on the other side and connect to the, the device that it would be normally. Like, let's say you have a cable, no? And you put something in the middle of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah but the, okay. <laughs> um... So it work like that. It's like a link link in the middle between the system you have now. You just plug that in and you have a short cable on the top. Like yeah, no, but the AI doesn't work plug. like that. I mean, but that's not how the AI works. Um, I mean, these models are it's not something that you're running locally. The models are these huge things. I mean, they're they're they're, they're open AIs. Okay. Big model you can't or you're running them connect the local signal to the AI, and then the AI can kind of give you a response. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you connect the device up to the internet, and the device then s sends the signal through, and then it re re responds back again. So you have a gateway. Let's say gateway. I mean, you have something that takes all the signals. Well, that takes the data. You have a brainstem that has all the eyes and ears and noses wired into it. And that brainstem goes all the way back to a brain on a different server, probably hosted by Amazon. Um, or Microsoft in this case. <laughs> or Right. And then that brain and makes then, the decision, sends everything back down the, ner the central nervous system to those little hands and all that's the same way, I think. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I've got a way of trying to... Demo. It'd be cool whiteboard. to be able to set it up like in various uh, grow rooms and have it uh, easily connectable. Because you have. So it would work on like the most, like you have poles and then you have a uh, troll master uh, and AC infinity. It would be cool if you could like plug it into all of those. Yeah, actually, I just realized this whiteboard doesn't come, or does the whiteboard come up on, did it come up on the thing? Oh, yeah, it does, actually. Jeez, the, the actual channel is so far behind. But I mean, the way it works is so you have, like, this. 
large language model, and this, this is the like the current thing with with AI. So it'll be the large language model, but this is open AIs, and you've got your whatever it is over here. I mean, it can be you're just typing some text in the web page, whatever you know. It like you want to set your growth, your your drawbacks whatever to perfections. Hmm? So, so you could you could want to be like setting your drybacks to perfection with AI, and control the irrigation system with that. That'd be something that'd be very useful for many people. Yeah, but I don't really know if that's um. I mean, okay, so these things would you. <sighs> There's a. So th th this this thing can do. Do things for you. Okay. So one of the things you can do is you can ask it lots of questions. You can give it documentation, ask it questions, and it'll analyze that and give you an answer. It's a language model. Um when you're getting into doing irrigation and stuff like that, I mean that's just kind of just logic based stuff. Not really having to think. What would be yeah, no, more interesting? If it has is... to analyze the data and make a choice that's smart for you, because like let's say you want to achieve a goal and the AI knows what different levels you need to be at at all your different reference points to get get there you know i guess it could make like more smart decisions than you could yeah but that okay so that would be like a, a pid controller because it has there's this this would be more like okay what i want you to do is figure out what's going to be the best nutrient regime that would give me the best yield and actually give it access to controlling the nutrients and let it use its knowledge where it can look through its knowledge base and go, okay, let me understand how these things work and I'll start to tinker with them. And based on doing, you know, minuscule little adjustments, it'll start to figure things out, uh, potentially. But it is this whole thing, like it, you, you've got to get the information into the model and then it gives you a response back. And it's getting better and better and easier and easier of doing it. Like now you, on open AI, their their app on your phone, you can talk to it and it has a very natural voice response back to you as well. You, know, you take a picture of something and go, what's this? And it'll tell you what's going on in the image. Um, if you point, you know, there's pictures of labels and things to extract the label information from it. Um, so that can be kind of handy. Um, when it comes into doing stuff like, you know, actual controls and bits and pieces, yeah, to to say, like, how would you implement it? It's I mean, like what we did with peel grow systems back in the day, these things just send data through to server in the back end. And that's just monitoring and processing all the information coming through. And it had a set of parameters that it was working to. Um, now it would be able to look at the data, analyze it, and say, you know, if people are recording, for instance, yeah, this is when I saw a loss in terpenes or this, you know, all those kind of, you know, grown notes, including that with all the environmental data so that it can focus in on that and learn and understand it and give you some kind of answer, then yeah, then it's, that's where the power, power is. I'm waffling. Well, no, that makes sense. Because what you're talking about is this AI tool is only as good as the information you give it. So hmm. just like everything else, it's all about you've got to give it a bunch of data before it can make a better decision. That's part of the problem. We as human beings come to everything with a preset number of suppositions that have allowed us to survive and thrive, et cetera, et cetera. But those aren't always accurate. This at least would be applying a different set of suppositions or at least, you know, hopefully more accurate ones. But it first got to get quote unquote trained. And I guess that's why so many artists and whatnot are upset about AI is because their work is what's used to train these models. So, you know, I guess kind of what we're saying is it could be a really good thing to use. It would have to get trained by a bunch of information first. Where you would get yeah. that gardening information, where you would get that real-time experimentation, I don't know. Usually that's university's territory to create things like that, but we don't really do that anymore like we used to. I mean, the beauty is you can give it access to all the literature. So that's what's, what's interesting. I mean, I, in, in terms of you can actually give it like um, white papers, 
that that sort of side of the literature of it all. And I think where it could be super interesting is when it comes to pest control is like, how do I get rid of X? But it can look at like 1500 different publications on how to treat these kind of issues and might figure out, well, hang on, if you combine a number of these together in a, um, a unique way, you suddenly have a better approach to solve the problem. Whereas we're still thinking along a more conventional, it makes sense to do it like this. It doesn't think like that. <laughs> you know, it's mm. making the connections it's making are ones that we probably may not make. And so, and can it, you ask so it to, to come up with like, a novel uh, solution, is a novel answer, is, it's more likely. Can you ask it to do like uh, organic versus non-organic solutions also? Yeah, you could. I mean, if you if you yeah. can give it input, specific input documents on organic amendments and solutions and non-organic ones, then it would look at those two. It also has a very broad general knowledge. Um, the problem with its broad general knowledge is it's always trying to be helpful and answer you. And in doing so, it will quite often make answers up. And that's where feeding it um, like white papers, et cetera, and telling it to use that as the context gives it much more accurate answers. Um, ones that you can be a bit more confident in are correct because it will bullshit with such a high degree of confidence. It's ridiculous. Um, so kind of like people. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's your mate Barry down the pub before Google got invented. <laughs> uh, he could sound incredibly convincing um, when you'd question yourself. It is that that good. Um, well, that, again, yeah. how much longer though does it need till it's trained till it can do predictive breeding? That's what I want to know. Yeah, well, it's getting techniques for doing all the fingerprinting and st stuff like that. It's getting faster and faster and better. Um, yeah, how long do all the companies have a close. lab in South America and they start making only seedless seeds or clones? Whatever mm, they end mm. up doing, they could do the seed uh, as a clone. You know, they have like those seeds they make in the tissue culture, like the artificial yep. seeds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I think that movie was called Boys from Brazil. Brazil. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know about that one. Is it part of the? Uh, Two girls, one cup. <laughs> That's an old reference. Wow. That's showing right. range. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think uh, let's just say conspiracy theories involving cloning have a long history in South America. Yeah, no, but the, the new technique, you know, is the seedless uh, tech from um, Breeder Steel. I would think like just like feminized seeds got really popular. There wasn't like a lot of the companies that continued to do regular. There are some, you know, but oh, by the way, this to fade over to feminized. And I guess that could happen too with uh, with regular this genetics. This was your you know, answer on the uh, on the micronized calcium. Oh, nice. And then. So this also then tells you the sources that it used to come up with the answer. It was and good. you know anybody in chat, if you want to go and have a, a little tinker with this at the moment while it's still open. Um... And what was it recommended? You can have a. I don't know if that link actually comes up, but can you go and have a look at it there? 
Um, I just said, you know, what are the benefits of using it? Um, improved cell wall strength, resistance to environmental stress, um, improvement in various development processes, tip necrosis, enhanced nutrient uptake and utilization, soil balancing and pH adjustment. Um, so those are notable that the benefits of microbes calcium extend beyond the points listed with positive implications for soil health. So yeah, I mean, it, it is just, giving you a summarization of what it's it found um but it can be really really helpful and you're like you and, know, and where um, is that could it tell you where that's commonly sold no it's not a search engine no no and that's an important thing to understand about these like chat gpt etc is that it is not a search engine um yeah. sure it was trained on a lot of information it knows a lot of stuff but it isn't a search engine so it's only knowledgeable on what it was trained on and its recall isn't a hundred percent on that stuff all the time um so it can't tell you you know what's currently going on having said that of course the they have gotten the pro version it can make calls out to the internet and in bing powered by chat API on Microsoft's Bing where it's chat GPT and Bing together, it'll do internet searching for you. Um, um, you know, like you can see, like, what is the history of, let's see what it comes back for that. Uh, one of the texts that's got access to is Cannabis Strains Bible, I think it was. Um, to go reference through all of that as well. I mean, there are some interestingly cool things you could have it do. Like one of the bits is running it as research agents, where yes, you can actually tell it. Oh, here we go. That didn't take too long. I don't know how accurate this is. I mean, what's the 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 vibe on whether or not. This is true about OG Kush. I don't know enough about it myself. Uh, but yeah, we shall leave that. This is where, this is where I can talk, like, this is where I'm curious about the veracity of information. Like, for example, the guys over at Breeder Syndicate, they claim to be the ones with firsthand knowledge. And it sounds like they've got enough to actually know. Uh, so I always wonder if there's a way to weight the value of a source for these inputs. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you can. You, you definitely can. And what you could also do is, as more people validate the information you can weight it more heavily as well you tend to have two groups though you have like many times there's like two camps claiming to have uh, made stuff mm. and then it kind of becomes like uh, I guess a credibility competition amongst, amongst with friends but, yeah, uh, from a certain time period, you're right. There seems to be a competition for veracity. But like, I guess really like uh, at a certain point, you get like people vouching and giving credibility to people's stories. I know. I mean, that's where you'd like... want one of these, like a swarm of agents, just to spend a week just trawling the internet and then pulling all of that information together. Because that's the problem. I don't think anybody actually spends. Like the Adam Dunn show has been going on for, you... for. The Adam Dunn show has been going on for a long time. And they mm. used to do like uh, shows where they went through different uh, cultivars and the different stories from different crews and trying to verify who's who and uh, who's really real and who's not. Uh, mm. And sometimes, so, you know, it's like uh, really hard to know because people have stories, you know. Uh, yeah, well, that's again, I mean, like that's so there's a good example of where the power of um, 
AI and large language models comes into play is you take all of those, that information, all of those podcasts, because you can transcribe all the audio from them and you just push it through these things and you tell them, okay, what I want you, the instruction you then give it is extract all the entity information out of this text and represent it in like relationships where you could have breeder and strain year and then the, that relationship could have a definition of what is the year etc cetera, etc cetera. and you tell it to go through all of this documentation and all the transcribed audio etc and build up this entity relationship mapping through all of this text and that's where you, at the end of it you'd start to go okay hang on all of these start to point to the same point they all eventually connect back up to here so you would be able to link all the entities across all the different stories you know and you'd have people in, in one podcast that you just heard about in a different podcast telling their stories so you could probably get like those references checked up yeah and it'll do it across multiple podcasts you know, and it will correctly identify the same entities being discussed or talked about and dates and references and map all of that information back down. And it, it distills it down and you would get a fairly good. Um, There's a few really big uh, channels that's been going on for a long time, like a few podcasts and some channels that's mm -hmm. been doing interviews with a lot of the different big names in the industry. So mm -hmm. I think if you do all of those big ones you get a lot of info in yeah that, that's what these tools are very powerful for that's what they're good at doing um they can read the text they can understand it they're aware of the context of it they can then identify what you're It'd be asking interesting of it um to see how that referenced up to the the, the strain database you have the seed finder no? Yeah, 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 yeah. It'd be interesting to see what uh, what was correct and not, you know, when they got cross referenced. Mm, mm. And, I still want and to if do you that don't with... call it Sherlock Homie, you're really missing an opportunity. <laughs> I'm thinking of um, like I've got to, I'd like to take the data from um, the breeder syndicate from the codex and then cross-reference that with what's available on seed finder and then do the same with um strainly because they've got fairly good with each a lot well a lot of the listings there have the lineage information in it as well and then you have um, the really popular one from the states that uh, everybody registered all the names in um uh, oh, that's no strainly. longer around it's gone. It doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, yeah. The galaxy's oh, wow. gone. You can't get hold of the galaxy anymore. Um, but it turns out that wasn't that accurate in in the end, too. Well, I don't know. There was a lot of controversy. Phylos is what you're thinking of, correct? Phylos is what everybody sent all their stuff into. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and... I suspect we'll see more and more of this coming out and you're going to see it being embedded in devices. It It's going that way. Well, at least they'll be able to talk. You know, you'll connect all these sensors up to your router at home and they'll talk back to a centralized AI that'll be um, doing stuff with it. Um, I think it's exciting. I like the idea of having it do more, being able to come up with um, uh, novel solutions to problems. You install Around... a cam in your fridge and it tell you what to shop? <laughs> yeah, you get that already. You um, do. Mm, you get fridges that do that already. That's fucking wild. But you don't have it as an add-on for the fridge, so you can just throw a small cam in the corner and that'll be it. Yeah, make this as an add-on, and I guarantee I can get it in all kinds of restaurants. If it can take a snapshot of a walk-in freezer and tell you what's in it without having to be in there, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. On the house. <laughs> On the house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. 
Um, right, well, that brings us up to an hour. Um, thank you, everybody, in, in, in chat for joining in. Really good to see everyone. I think we'll try and do the Saturday thing again. Um, and hopefully we'll get Pat from Green Bicycles to come on the show and have a chat. And I know you've got, I think, uh, Love of Land Race. They're launching their seed thing soon. So we try and get them on when they do that. And he can come back and talk about what he's been doing with some South African land race strains. Um, that ought to be pretty interesting. That'd be cool. Mm, like some real sort of original Durban poison, poison in at all, um, strains, which are great. Um, so that should be really good. Um, yeah, let's see. Chance main is able to talk about AI for inventory control. Yep, and for listing stuff, creating listings for products, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but yeah, as I said, if I don't know if that link came up, but if you go to plgrow, plgrow .systems, um, it's no longer the environment monitoring stuff. It's this AI bits and pieces. And you can go and have a little play with it there. Um, and it's also got the strain database bit on the front that you can go and have a little tinker with. Um, so yeah. Oh, and there is a Patreon if you do want to sign up to it. Um, what is the Patreon? That's a good bloody question. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash OG show. And if you sign up to the $5 a month and are on uh, uh, Discord, which would be really handy, you can then access the AI Grow Assistant on Discord. Um, ask your questions and away you go. But that'd be cool. All right. Anyway, hope everybody stays safe and have a good one. And we'll see you in a two weeks time or something like that. Um, if I'm not mistaken. Be good. Yeah. I'm chat, chat, chatting away. And you guys, GMF, Magma? User. Stay User. high. <laughs> <laughs> As always, stay high, stay safe, stay good. All right, everybody. We shall 